Hello and welcome to the Ruth Loves to Knit podcast. I'm Ruth and of course I love to knit. When I do that intro sometimes I feel like I'm at some sort of knitting AA meeting, <laughs> admitting to my addiction to knitting. But it's lovely to have you here. You're very, very welcome and um, I hope we'll have a good time together. Today is uh, Tuesday the 5th of October. Every time I 2021. Every time I say the date, I just think, how how has it got to this point in the year? But here we are. Um, I have the house to myself. Um, the sun has finally come out after a horrendous night of rain and wind. Sure, it wouldn't be um, a podcast in the UK, at least, without um, a weather update. <laughs> and so I thought I would take this opportunity to um, podcast while uh, the house is relatively quiet and uh, the sun is shining. There is obviously a dog in the house, so you may hear her chirping um, some point of the podcast, but uh, we'll keep going and uh, just ignore her. <laughs> so I hope you're all doing well. I hope you've all had a good couple of weeks. I delayed the podcast a wee bit for a very special reason, and you know, that'll come uh, to light as the podcast goes on. But uh, lots and lots to share, lots and lots to talk about. In fact, I was saying to somebody yesterday, you might not need, just need a cup of tea or coffee. You might need a bucket of popcorn because this could be a feature length episode. <laughs> but we'll see how we get on. So where can you find me? I'm on Ravelry at Crafty Mad Midwife. I'm on Instagram at Ruth Loves to Knit and I have an email for the podcast and that is Ruth Loves to Knit at gmail.com and feel free to get in touch with me. Probably best not to use Ravelry. I am not awfully active. Um, I really honestly just use it as a, a shop for buying um, patterns, uh, my other addiction. Um, but if you really want to get in touch and I love to hear from people, I love to um, have messages sent. Obviously you can leave a message down below if you want to, but if it's something more private or if you want to discuss something, Instagram and email are definitely the best way to get me. Um, and after the big furor last night or yesterday when Instagram was down, um, we we're, I think it's all about back and, and working again. So. Yes, you're very welcome. Um, it's been quite a three weeks, I think it is now. Um, we've had a busy three weeks. We've had uh, one child needing a PCR test. Her best friend has come down with COVID and is really quite poorly, but all negative so far and no symptoms here. So we're very thankful, although we're very sad that Eva's best friend is feeling so poorly. Um, I usually say I live in Devon. Um, with my husband Nigel and my two children Samuel who's um, 11 and Eva who's 13 and they're all back at school all back at work and it's lovely uh, <laughs> and even with all the furore over the fuel situations here in the UK um, the school bus is still running so I'm a happy mummy <laughs> so let's get started well Anybody, unless you're living under a rock or you're very new to this podcast, knows that um, we've been having a cal going. From the 1st of July to the 30th of September, we had the Across the Pond Shawl Cal with my beautiful friend, Fernanda, who is Little Monkeys and Me on Ravelry and on Instagram and on YouTube. She has a wonderful podcast. Um, we're running a Shawl Cal and oh, it was just fantastic. So many people entered. And of course, I haven't written down the amount of people. I think we worked out there was 153 um, finished objects on Ravelry. And we had our first rookie mistake. We had an Instagram uh, hashtag going across the shawl, post the pond shawl cal um, on Instagram. But rookie mistake are these newbies. We didn't put FO at the end of that. So we had a separate chat. We would have a separate chat and a separate FO thread. So it was quite fun on Friday night when we met to um, get the winners <laughs> to scroll down hundreds of posts. I think it was over 500 and something posts to find chat and to find finished objects. But our lovely friend, Alexa, um, <laughs> whisper that in case I've set everybody's off, um, came to our assistance and she gave us random numbers to be able to choose the winners. And of course today we'll announce the winners, but I'm, 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 I'm coming to that, don't worry. And I just want to thank everybody for taking part, all your comments, all your lovely um, 
finished objects. I now have an even bigger uh, list of things that I want to knit. <laughs> Um, and just how you all took part and really entered into it and some of you knit your first shawl and crocheted your first shawl or crocheted your first shawl and um, most people I think had fun some didn't get finished it doesn't matter it's only a bit of fun um, and um, but to see some of the, the beautiful designs the beautiful ideas the beautiful yarn choices we are really a blessed community that we have all these things at our fingertips and um, yeah it was just fun and if I'm being honest, the most special thing was to get to know, for me to get to know Fernanda better and to meet her family online, of course, because she's over in America and I'm here in England and to just get to know her better. That has been a real blessing to me. And um, I thank you, Fernanda, so much for um, joining with me in our first call of well, I don't know if there'll be any more or not. We might be one and done, but uh, we'll see what happens. So. The other thing I just wanted to um, say was I had a bit of a D stash. It's still on Instagram under Ruth Loves to Knit D stash. Um, just put that um, at Ruth Loves to Knit D stash. And there's still a few bits and pieces, but I just want to thank so much everybody who entered into that and bought things. They're all away. Most people, I think, are starting to receive them. And I just can't thank you enough for um, taking some of my stuff that absolutely loved, but um, just wasn't for me anymore. And that enables me then to post out some of these prizes and I'm going to a yarn show on Saturday. So I might rekindle some of the some of that yarn. I'm going to um the Woolly Weekend. Um just it's just about six miles from me in a wee a wee village called Lifton. Um well the village is closer, but it's up a narrow Devon road um in an, a 900 year old house called Kelly House, and they're raising funds from that um yarn show for um children's hospice here in the southwest of England of Devon and it's actually into a Cornwall address but I'm very very close to the Cornwall border so we'll, we'll straddle the border for this weekend and I'm so looking forward to seeing that local dyers local local weavers local spinners and we went um two years ago the first year that we moved down here I took my daughter and we had a great time it was just so well or just very small maybe 10 or 12 vendors just but just a really really lovely time so super looking forward to that it's on Saturday and Sunday um, if anybody's in the area come on down and um, yeah I've sent all my bunting if you watched last time you saw my bunting and incidentally I think you know over the years I have knit some lovely things none of my not my designs other people's beautiful designs and you know if it's not on Instagram you haven't knit it and um, <laughs> I've put them on and I've had lovely messages but I have never had as many messages asking me if I have a pattern for bunting simple bunting and um, I must have had 30 messages asking me about a bunting pattern that made me laugh um such a simple pat free on Ravelry um just look up knitted bunting and um but I've sent mine off anyway and I'm sure if I have the nerve I don't know if I will or not I will take you with me it might end up being photographs but if I have the nerve I will try and video a little bit of it um but I kind of lose my nerve or I forget or I get talking or something, but we'll see what happens. But I'm sure you'll see some of the purchases um, that come from um, next Saturday. So that's all the chat, all the waffle. Eight minutes in, I haven't started any knitting. <laughs> so I should say what I'm wearing. Well, this is the sock set shawl. I knew I would have problems with that. And it's by the Cozy Up Knits. I knit it a long, long time ago. and you can see the beautiful lace and it is just a brilliant wee shawl it takes um once one skein of 100 grams and then two 20 grams now i did find that i needed a wee bit more than one of the 20 grams so i just continued with um i didn't use all of the 100 grams so i just substitute the 100 gram in does that make sense um i've knit it so long ago um, I knit it before the days when I thought I should record what I knit but I think if my memory serves me right it's Adina's Home of Craft and Wild Rose Yarns Minis so um, this is the main colour and then these ones are the minis have a wee look I mean you know when you say you hear people saying oh look I still haven't <laughs> cut in one of the, the ends you know you hear people saying oh it's too nice a um, too nice a skein to make socks out of well I just think this is a brilliant idea 
especially if you already have a, a 20 gram mini with your 100 grams i just think it's gorgeous a lovely lightweight but and there's a lovely wee bit of um lace at the bottom there too a wee bit of detail so i really really like it and maybe i'll maybe put it back on it's it's getting chilly here in devon um i i always laugh whenever they say it's cold here because having moved from the north of scotland we find it really quite um nice here <laughs> can't get this back on the way there we go leave it on for now although there's, there's more things to show you so this wasn't one i did for the the um across the shawl across the pond oh dear me shawl cal um but uh it's lovely all the same and um I just I just think I've had a lot of nice comments about it as I've worn it out and about sorry I keep looking down but I do have notes and today if I didn't have notes this could be a three hour long episode excuse me <coughs> I'm already coughing excitement excitement well we do well we do a prize I'm so excited so we took from um both Fernanda and I took from chat on Instagram and FOs on Instagram and chat on Ravelry and FOs on Ravelry and um, if you want to know, if you haven't won on my podcast, maybe pop over to Fernanda's and you might have won on hers. She's got four more prizes to tell you about. Um, and I'm not going to share those secrets now. And uh, yeah, when you finish mine, pop over and you might have won on hers. You never know. So the first one was for chat on Instagram. Now, I apologise right up front if I butcher the names and I know I will. And I just, I'm going to have to bend down because of that much stuff. I wasn't able to put it all up high. So let me see. So the first prize was this. I'm not going to take it out of the bag because I've already shown it on other podcasts. So this is the lovely Attic Spin Die. This one was gifted to the podcast and I bought this one to go along with it because I just thought it was a lovely um, addition. And then this lovely bag is from miss mandy lou um she is the mum of the dyer of blue fern yarns and you can buy her uh, bags on the blue fern yarns uh website there'll be more about blue fern yarns in a wee minute um and i'll put all the details down below i now know how to link shops I haven't quite worked out the etsy ones but i've got the dot com one sort of thing and um this is the first prize excited to send the and this is to now i will put your details down below okay this is to cats and monster 60 that's her um handle on instagram she doesn't have her name on instagram so if you're cats and monster 60 for um and i think maybe you might be in germany because you, all your posts were in german although thank you to google translate you can read it um and she put many um chats it was lovely to see that she had come up several times on the posts and um she knit a couple of of different shawls but because it's chat we'll not say which shawls were. so that's cats and monster 60 and if you get in touch with me probably the best way to get in touch with me is by email if you wouldn't mind just so because you can get lost in the instagram um and that's uh, ruth loves to knit at gmail.com and we have agreed we're going to give you a month because there's so many podcasters life's busy so the 5th of October today, we'll give it to the 5th of November. And if I haven't heard from you, then we'll redraw them. But how could you not want? So, oh, I didn't, that's Violet and Fuchsia. There you go. Lovely flowers and that wee bag. And that's perfect. So that is, again, Cats and Monster 60 off Instagram. But I'm not going to tell you the other ones just yet. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go into some FOs. Let's go some into some FOs. So, finally, finally, you'll all be cheering and clapping your hands that I have finished the Marie Curie Sock Quest socks. As most of you know, Mary, um, lovely um, doctor from um, the Marie Curie Hospice, uh, she goes under Sherlock Knits, says Dr. Sarah, and um, put out a, a plea every year for socks for the, the patients in the hospice. Um, and I think her aim was to also give maybe relative socks too. And of course, if you know the Marie Curie um, emblem, it's a daffodil. So she wanted yellow socks. So it was made for me, only that I lost my sock mojo. Yellow is my favourite colour, if you don't know that by now. <laughs> and um, so this was right up my street. I had plenty of yarn that I could, be, I could use. And finally, 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 I have finished the two pairs that were sitting on the... Um, 
in the bags for a long time. I had one done of each and I just couldn't get the motivation to do them. But I, I said to the girls at my knit club, right from now on, knit club is sock knitting and that got them done. So the ones, uh, these ones are the first one, not put ones, they're only vanilla socks. Um, And this is, just let me see what the name of the, this is Star Trails Yarn in Sunspot. I'm sure those will cheer somebody up. And it's lovely. I did do them in, I think, a size six um, this year. I did men's sizes last year. I was very ambitious. but So that's the first pair. And then, and you've seen them both. And then this is the second pair. They are two. <laughs> and this is the actual Flower Power Fund um, yarn. Um, every month there's a yarn dyer dyes yarn and the money uh, they give a percentage of the income to the flower power fund <laughs> my good northern irish accent there par um and um they give a percentage of their income from those from the sale of that yarn to um the Marie curie fund and that's the rosy moments rosie's moments and it's called daffodil so sorry putting it in front of my face and i actually split that and this into 50 grams um so i get more socks but i think they'll be for next year i don't think i'll get around to doing those this year but i have um some others that i think purple definitely was my color for a while so i have some others i have five pairs i'm sending them so those ones <laughs> these were actually um oh this yarn was actually lay family yarn oh look it's gone dark again they family yarn from the so the Strictly Sock Along last year. And that was um for raising money for Bill's special bus. And then the last one is the wee pair I showed you just a few weeks ago. I decided just to give those because they've got a bit of yellow in them. And that was when I, for my first shadow wrapped heel. And um, so there we go. Whew, done it. Th did it. Sorry. With plenty of time. And that's five pairs ready for the Marie Curie sock quest. I'll get those posted off and uh, I don't want to say it's a relief because I was very happy to commit to doing it and so many lovely people have committed to doing it Um, and obviously it's for a really good cause but with lacking of sock mojo it was a bit of a struggle this time. So that's my first lot of FOs. Then um. Um, I did a pair of socks a few months ago for um love as a shop sample for lovely Ishrat of Fruitful Fusion. That's her um details there. Trying to keep everything together. All her details, although I will put it down below. And um she got in contact with me again to see if I would do another shop sample for her. Um and um a garment this time. And this time she asked me to do the V back tea from uh, Jamie Hoffman. I didn't realise actually that um, so many people had done this. I I I've, I know um, little Ike. Um, she had she had done a V back tea, but I haven't seen that many other in my sort of spectrum. Now this was only a size four, so it came off my needles in two minutes. It was great, nearly nearly an inspiration to get down a few sizes. But this is what I came up with, or she came up with. She came up with the fade, and last week I showed you them in the skein. I'm going to put this in front of my face. And it's just beautiful. You almost see it all get, there we go. <laughs> just beautiful. And in beautiful yarn, beautiful to knit with. Um, a lot of short rows, but we got through it. And um, I was a bit concerned because of the short rows, the way that it kind of went that way on the bottom, but it's that's the side that is important. So, and it, she, she likes it either way. And so the yarns were, let me see if I can get this right. Because I presume she's gonna have them in her shop and you might want to run and get them. So the first, oh, I've got these wrong way around. The first one, the top pink one is Dusk, then Cornish Sunset, but it's um, C-O-R-N-I-C-H-E, it's not Cornish as in near where I live, is the second one. But of course they just go into a beautiful fit, like you can hardly even tell, you know, they just go. The next one is Iced Tea, 
And then this gorgeous one is peach tea. And I just love it. Although I always find it very strange making something um, that's not anywhere near your side. I did get my daughter to try it on, um, much to her disgust. Pink is not her colour. Um, she is a real uh, tomboy. <laughs> and um, no, if I have to, but it's turned out beautifully. It's blocked beautifully and I will get that sent off to her later on today. And that's again a shrat of fruitful fusion. And I can't recommend her yarn high enough. She's really, it's beautiful. It's so lovely. And her, that's in DK, sorry. That's a v, the V-back DK tea by Jamie Hoffman. And that's a shop sample, so I'll not be keeping that. Then two mammoth um, ones are finished. <laughs> um, last time you saw that I had started another um, of my loves, <laughs> Tiff Nealon's designs have just blown me away recently i i don't know why i didn't know her before but um i think i saw there's some there's the i knit seven we're doing a cal um with her break in the tide shawl and that's where i first saw her. i didn't join the cal but i did knit it um um the same time i suppose and then i got down the rabbit hole and i now have three of hers knit and i have yarn skeined up for another one <laughs> But I may have done this one a little bit bigger than the pattern um, says. So it's a rubbish photograph in the pattern, but it's called Seasons of Love by Tiff Nealon Hand Knits. And it says wrap, shawl, scarf or whatever you'd like to call it. It's my kind of pattern. And um, I just decided, I think I said last time, that I'm not keeping any yarn for good anymore. I'm going to use it all. Um, this is probably one of the most expensive things I own because I did it all in hand dyed yarn. I'm just going to use it um, and enjoy it and um, whatever. And the two, the yarn, I'll tell you about, I'll show you it first, I suppose. Now, you might need a wide angled screen to see this. Look at the folds. Oh, it smells delicious. Um, I'm not sure what way to do this. <laughs> so if you saw my Instagram, you've already seen this, but I'll start at the tip. So the lighter ones are blue fern yarns. Then this is um, the a skein that I was sorry, it's getting dark again. This is a skein that I was given when I after my surgery by Addict Spinda. It's called A Moment's Rest. Um, very kindly given, uh, gifted that one. And then this one, oops, this one, kind of going in, is uh, A Gleam Through the Bower by um, Attic Spinda as well. And then as we come down, that's back to uh, Blue Fern Yarns. Now, I just thought, you know, I'm going to just use all the yarn. I'm just going to knit. It's one of those things you could just knit and knit and knit. I'm just going to knit till I finish the ball. I hate having wee scraps left, but of course, I forgot. Sometimes you get a hundred gram ball, sometimes you get 110, sometimes you so I'm a wee bit off kilter with this, as you can see in a minute when I if I get this back to the point. <laughs> you know, I don't care. It's fantastic. Look at this. <laughs> a wee bit of a different in length, a wee bit different. But you know, because it goes round your neck doesn't matter as long as you know because you can put round twice it absolutely doesn't matter um so if i can if i can show you this, i'll stick a picture up here somewhere um but this is what and it is just i'll put it around just but i'll cook to death it is bigger than a slanket <laughs> Um, and I did it in, um, I didn't wet block it. I did it with, <laughs> I am going to love this. There we go. Sorry, this is very in your face, but I'm in a very small room. And it is curling a wee bit at the top, but you see, it is curling a wee bit. But there's so much of it, I'm nearly thankful. And you can wear it as a proper, sh you know, as a around your it's like a snake it's so big um and you can wear it you know oh you get a better idea of the colors there now so 
the, the first half is all like this beautiful stitch and the second half is oh, the sun shining on it. This beautiful stitch. Sorry if I'm on your face. And it is just, I love it. 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 There we go. And as I say, I used, so Blue Fern Yarns. It's where um, you can get the Miss Mandy Lou um, project bags as well. So hang on. Blue Fern Yarns. And I used, sorry looking down, but I just want to go. I used Oh Honey Honey, Turmeric and Be Beautiful. You use, um, it's a DK weight, so I help them double. And you use, um, it's very hard to explain without giving away the details, but you use, um, you knit along and then you pull all your yarn to the end of the needle and knit back. So you've always got two strands of yarn going. Um, so the background colour is turmeric. And then the the main sort of colory colour <laughs> is Attic Spindai. In the colour, as I said, Gleam Through the Bower and A Moment's Rest. And then I used wheat as the background for that. So probably this, this is wheat. And then this is this kind of one is um, turmeric. Very hard to explain because it's a paid for pattern. I don't want to give too much away, but if you haven't tried one of her patterns and you think you like the look of this, they are so simple, um, but so effective. And it's just, I absolutely love them. Um, and as I say, I've got another one kicked up to do. So that's Seasons of Love by uh, Tiff Nealon. And that was a mammoth one, but so nice just to knit away on. Great. Um, turn over the page. Russell, Russell. And you'll all be glad to know, I'm using my shawl, you'll all be glad to know that I have finished the kinship shawl. <laughs> so the kinship shawl, kinship shawl, I've an awful lot of hard to say shawl names today. The kinship shawl is by Stephen West and Olga, um, Baraya Kefelian and it only clicked with me that that is Olga Jazzy on Instagram and of course I know that name but I didn't know that her full title and this is from Pom Pom 35 that pom pom that I want to knit everything from and I literally got this finished late last night I was really 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 hurrying and then I hung it down over um the um, cooker in the kitchen and it was dry by this morning and I haven't tied in any of it well these are I've done a um, weave and steven so I just have to cut these off there's a million of them um, but this is what we've got absolutely gorgeous you see look at all the ends and another Beautiful big shawl, excuse me, itchy face, sorry dad. Um, and you can see just so effective, but so intuitive. And um, I did um, a Turkish, no, an Icelandic cast off for the first time. I'm not even sure if I want to show you, it's maybe not that good. It, it um, oh gosh, it took ages, but um, a lot less time than, a, than his usual eye cord, but. It really makes a nice finish and um, oh it's lovely and cozy and again I could wear it like a proper shawl or whatever way I want and I just as soon as I saw the pom-pom issue for that I thought I have to knit this so if you haven't tried a Stephen West maybe that's one that you could go for and I've shown you this several times too but oh and another I just love finishing as I say I love finishing up a ball of wool I hate wee bits hanging around and actually the black I ran out of two two rows before the end but I couldn't really it wasn't one of these ones that it was just that wee bit there and I still needed it I couldn't just cut it short you know um it the the pattern did say that you would need more than two skeins but um I didn't want to break into another one I think I used like three grams and I just picked a mini that I had a wee black mini um 10 gram mini and I've even got that much left from the 10 grams and I've got from the gold and the pinky one I've got 20 and I've got five now if that's not finishing off yarn I don't know what is and so the black is from love hand dyed You'll see that a lot in my podcast because whenever I first started getting into um, 
you've hand dyed yarn they were selling their hand dyed yarn for eight pounds a skein so i have quite a lot of it and um they did they went to a, a wool show a yarn show up in aberdeenshire whenever before i left peterhead where we used to live and i took me and my daughter went to it and um i bought quite a lot because they had you know you could squish it and you could see it and everything and that's winter demons four ply and their um tag is their tag on their website is no two skeins are the same which is the same in, in um or no two skeins are alike or something it's the same in all hand dyed but for that i didn't i didn't do helical knitting or anything i just knit away and it's this one's called Britera b-e-r-i-t-r-a and i just used two so there's the hand and then the this um lovely gold and that's showing up really well the gold and the pinky color are just red yeah merino yak absolutely delicious to, to knit with uh, i just got that from a local yarn shop the woolly beater in oakhampton and um the gold one if you just in, i'll put it down below anyway the color is 07504 and the pinky one um is purple pink apparently it is and um the color is 07517 and um that's very um really it feels quite um sturdy you know like a plump four ply but i was really i would definitely knit with that again so that's the so that's that finally finished that mammoth <laughs> mammoth task i think there was 621 stitches although if you're doing his um mcal starting this week i think probably you may get used to that much i think last year when i did the um slip extravaganza was there 700 and nearly 800 stitches or 900 stitches or something at the end so I maybe shouldn't complain about this um but it is just beautiful and i will get the what am i should i just leave the ends as a fashion feature chuffed a bit so that i really am so there you go so i'm all shawled out you would think you think no if you know me there'll be more many more shawls to do many more shawls to do and um i thoroughly enjoyed that so that's that's all of the finished objects plenty of them um and uh but all of them have been started well apart from the v back tea all of them have been well started um, and should have been finished before now um and yeah please just punch with those excuse me while i just put this in the floor and lift something else up okay um so we do another winner okay this time we're going to go with um let me see an fo from uh ravelry and this is this person will get these beautiful help if the label was round wouldn't it oh they're soft as butter they really are from eden cottage yarns you see that eden cottage yarns is this lovely sparkle and the one the coordinating one goes with it sorry the way the light's shining in but hey ho and this one is um viola and this one is daffodil and then also you'll get this gorgeous bag from so Sharn so yarnalicious one that was gifted this one was gifted um and um you know she's one of my top maybe my top <laughs> bag makers i just love her bag it's her little label and this will be all packaged up and sent to where am i jenny d40 and that's jenny dawson and she actually did i was so chuffed when her name came out because she actually did a crochet shawl which i just think is some sort of saucery magic and um it's the anniversary shawl um and hers yeah she put that on ravelry so jenny dawson jenny d40 you let me know and this will be coming your way so we'll just do another one while we're at it <laughs> the next one is um for chat on um instagram and um this is uh what did she do the possibly the most popular shawl in the whole cal was the humley bee shawl and um i had i bought the pattern but never got it started so many people did it and um sorry i'm talking with my head down and that winner gets let me see where i am now a lovely skein of upside down lay family yarn 
it's a sock set and it's perfect posy 85 extra fine merino 15 percent nylon and 365 meters and then a 20 gram mini and this beautiful bag so sock set size from made in abervala and um i bought these um a while ago and just thought they would be absolutely perfect together there we go. And the winner of that is, where am I? Magda Knits. Now, I recognise that name. I think Magda has um, a lovely podcast. You could go and check that out. And that's um, what she's winning for um, entering the, the cow. So there you go. There's another two winners. Oh, we quickly do whips and then we'll get another winner in. <laughs> so, as I say, I have a daughter called Eva, who is the most on-girly girl in the world. And um, she loves getting her hair cut, but she goes to a local barber and she gets the back of it shaved and then she wears a long fringe, typical teenager. And um, all her friends have long hair down to their waist, but she shaves the back of her head. And I am not. That's she. She's a very shy wee girl. And that's the only way she expresses herself. And it's only hair. And that's fine. And she, I love her. And she looks gorgeous. And she thinks she looks gorgeous. Anyway, mumble, mumble, mumble. And she... Um, loves her barber. She's an American lady from Texas, but is in Launceston. Um, the barber's called the Mad American, and it's always an entertainment to go in. She's great fun, and take my son there too, obviously. And um, I was knitting socks one day when I was waiting for the kids getting their hair cut, and she's oh look at that, and you know the way they do is that knitting or crochet and other, and I of course Eva came out and said, "Mommy, I think you should knit her a pair of socks." Well, her favorite color is green. You get your sunglasses on. I found a green skein in my um, stash and I have started a pair of socks for her. Do you think she think that's green enough? Do you? <laughs> just a vanilla pair of socks. I find when you're doing socks for other people, it's just better to do vanilla unless they ask for something else. And I'm just doing the um, shadow wrap heel again. And this is from, this is from America, this yarn, and it's uh, Clark and Ellie. And it's 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 400, and it's called In Your Eyes. So maybe they've got green eyes, but I think if she's a green lover, she'll love those. So, you know, sock mojo slowly, slowly coming back. And um, it was just interesting. I lifted this out last night to, to put it in, my, no, write about it in my notes. And um, she's actually got a scripture text on it, Joshua 1, 9, and that'll be coming up later on in my podcast. So you never know, um, you might get a wee encouragement from that. But that's just a wee pair of vanilla socks uh, for Eva's barber. <laughs> and that's in my Heidenhammer Mini 03. It's just a wee, a wee small one. Got it quite a long time ago. And that's that. Then, um, what's the next one? Then last week I showed you the shawl that I had now got on the needles, um, or I was going to get on the needles. I wanted to, to, to get it on the needles. And here's what I've done so far. <laughs> Can you see what it is yet? Just say what you see. Do you remember? I was thinking about that. Do you remember? If you're from the UK, you'll know that reference and I've got the right accent for it. Um, and catchphrase, do you remember? <laughs> Maybe it's still on, I haven't seen it in years. This is the most easy, like TV knitting, obviously. It is fantastic. And I think probably it starts like this and then um, it's all plain until you get to 300 plus stitches. And then you add, and I think I shocked everybody by this last week, as I said, never would I use this. I'm going to use this beautiful mohair or floof and it's Katia Ar Are, Aria. Aria concept um, and it's baby alpaca and super kid not just any ordinary kid super kid mohair and it's in color 118 and that's true to color so I think that's going to be amazing and this is another love hand dyed it's 50 shades of black and I'll show you the picture so it's the Giselle shawl by Cami Jo Knit. Again, she's got a podcast. And this is the back. And then you put this lovely lace um, front on it. And I think it's just going to be beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And so far, I have knit this in meetings and <laughs> under the table. And um, it's it's the yarn's such a lovely drape off this uh, yarn as well. You can see. So 
I think the contrast of the dark and the and the light excuse me I apologize the dark and the light um is really lovely of course I have it on my Licka needles with my Amazon cheapy Amazon um point stoppers so that's as I, as I told you I have a lot of lot of love hand dyed just double check that's the name yes 50 shades of black and I have two um skeins of that it does say it maybe take um 900 meters and I've got 800 meters so I'm gonna have to see what I can get away with um use another mini just to finish it off I hate going into another skein if it's not going to be used and this is housed in my lovely wee soft accents um Zimbabwe bag she is on Etsy I think I said before my, my cousin my cousin lives in Zimbabwe so this was nice to get so that's that and then um my mum's top I haven't done any more on it because um I'm going home to see my mummy and daddy <laughs> at the end of October in the half term holidays I haven't been in Ireland in it'll be over two years um and I thought I shouldn't maybe keep knitting on it um in case it's not the right size but if it's not the right size it's going to go to somebody because I'm not ripping it out <laughs> um and it's the Rena de Picus, I'm getting better at saying these things, um, tea by uh, Valentina Bogdanova. Couldn't say it at all the first week I did it. And just anybody who hasn't seen it, this is the, it's obviously not blocked. It'll be absolutely stunning. And it's, let me get it a bit better. Oh dear me. I'll show you a picture of it, maybe that would be better. Um, and then it's just absolutely straight down for the wee ice cream holding on to the dregs of summer. And um, these were new to me. I hope I've got the round, round the right way. I thought these were fun for the for the stoppers. Um, and it's knitting up so beautiful. It's soft as anything. And um, it is this. I printed out the full picture this time because a few people said they couldn't see it. And that's what it'll look like when it's all blocked out. And as I said last week, I'm going to knit it a wee bit longer because I don't think my mum, who's, you know, not as young as she was, wants uh, um, top of the trousers <laughs> um, top. But maybe I'm wrong. Sorry, mum, if I've just insulted you. And um, so that'll be that'll be going home with me in October and that'll be knit on then. And I have used Sug Snuggly Star, Sud Seer Dar, Snuggly, Snuggly Star, sorry, Snuggly. And it's cashmere merino, cashmere merino nylon four ply and it's 170 meters per 50 grams. And I actually got it for a totally different project and just thought it was perfect for this one. I think um, it was one of those love hand, love, um, love hand out in the brain, love crafts. They, they sometimes do these packs of 10 and I think that's where I got it um, reduced. So I think that's that's gonna be lovely and a really easy easy knit for when I'm out in Ireland just chatting to people or whatever in the car or whatever and that's in my Rick Rack room bag. So well, we're getting there, we're getting there. And then oh my muscle burra um top or my muscle burra hat. Um I have a, watched a few podcasts who have said that the way I pronounced it now they pronounce it that way and I was really proud of myself that I can say Musselboro in the right way and um I just thought I would show you the the, the hat and how well um I've got on <laughs> pride does come before a fall <laughs> I may or may not put a little bit of um footage in here of um knit grip where um I realized this hat was not the right size not the right gauge it was too open um i didn't like it um in this particular thing and that day i actually had a mustard dress on and um some of the ladies at the knit group said why are you knitting a hat you never wear a hat which is true but the badly skeined do apologize the mustard in that was exactly the mustard of the dress i was wearing i don't know if it really sits me up maybe make me look jaundiced but um i ripped it out you know it wouldn't be a podcast my Ruth Loves to Knit podcast without something ripped back and the yarn reused for something else. Now, you'll be disappointed if you didn't have that experience on my podcast, wouldn't you? <laughs> You're going to think I have some sort of issue, which you might be right. And that's in my favouritest, favouritest bag that lovely Hannah made me. 
um my lovely friend and um that's going to be um just one of we wee one skein so shawl maybe the sun glitter or something like that and so you will see that again so so pride comes before a fall i can say muscle borough and then i had to rip it all out <laughs> so you'll forgive me for that listen we're nearly there um the last um fo or last whip for a few more prizes um, last week I showed you that I wanted to knit the pressed shawl, the pearl, the pressed flower shawl by Savory Knitting, and it didn't click with me either that Savory Knitting is the designer behind the Felix Cardi and Jumper, and I have knit both. Um, didn't I don't know why it didn't click with me, and um, so I have had real trouble, real trouble with this, and I suppose it is the benefit of of Ravelry. I was able to go in Ravelry and see a lot of other people had trouble with it, um. The size of the chart was minuscule so i was able to blow that up so at least i have that now um but it's just a bit i i don't know whether it's you know you're used to um knitting certain designers and you know their ways and you know what they mean by this and that and this is maybe just a new designer to me well i've knit the jumpers but they i didn't find them a problem um and maybe it's just learning new ways and i'm too old maybe to learn new ways i don't know <laughs> but um i really struggled so there was a lovely lady on ravelry and i just want to maybe call her she's called melanie but her ravelry is mel love knitting and it's love l u v and i can't thank her enough she took the time out of her day to help me in this endeavor and um she had even gone as far as doing a row count for every row and had published it for other people to use and she helped me understand in great detail thank you so much the chart and where i had totally gone wrong um and now that i can actually see the chart it also helps so i ripped back i also changed needle size it said four millimeters and it was bulletproof i was just it was going to stand up by itself so i upped it to 4.5 and i do like the the thing a bit better so all I have done is the setup rows and I'm using witchcrafty lady uh, Polworth DK she has the most gorgeous colors on her website and very good prices too um, I put all the details down below I have bought quite a bit of it because it's just and it's a 250 gram 250 meters per 100 grams so it goes a long way and these are the colors I'm using and those are just about right and this is what I've done so far. Well, I'll show you the picture. Wouldn't that be a good idea? Picture I don't think is very good. So, Press Flowers by Savory Knitting. There's gorgeous pictures on, on Ravelry. And I can find the knitting. This is just the wee setup that I've done so far. So you do a provisional um, cast on. And then you can see the flowers are starting to emerge. I think it's going to be gorgeous if I just get to grips with um, it is beautiful. If I just get to grips with the chart and as I say now I can see it it really is an improvement <laughs> but 99% of the comments on Ravelry were that the chart was hard to read. Um, I just think it's different ways different um, you know she doesn't just hold your hand quite as much as other people and i have got this in my beautiful mozambique bag that my lovely friend who uh, works there with her family um sent me recently they're home on leave at the minute with their two little girls they're going back in january and this is one of the tailors in their village that they live in um made this beautiful bag and i just immediately put my knitting into it and um makes me smile every time i see it so there you go so this has been around the world podcast today hasn't it so that's all of the whips hello you know me i have ideas i have um dreams i have other things next time i podcast i could have completely different things on the needles but sure that keeps life interesting doesn't it right will we do another winner okay the fourth winner is from ravelry and fo now this lady did a lot of shawls so the likelihood of her winning something was quite high <laughs> um and her name is uh her name in real life is violetta she's from romania and her um handle on um ravelry is i'm gonna say this wrong crafty bubalina 
don't know why that made me laugh. So that's Crafty Bubbleina, who is Violetta. And um, she has, um, the one that she won for is the Brush Creek Shawl. You can have a look through all of those. The, the thread's obviously closed, but it's still up there. And she won the coveted Hohe bag. Now, I, between Alexa, I'm just putting my hand in the bag. That's how things have been chosen. And if you remember, every time I take this bag out, I'm terrified I'll rack it. And this is the beautiful Hohe bag, which will be winging its way to Romania. Um, and um, if you could get in touch with me, Violetta, I will put that in the post to you. Maybe you could let me know the best way to do that in case things are different there. I'm not sure. And it's still in the bag. It came in and I'll get that all parceled up nicely for you. And um, congratulations. If you can get in touch with me, that would be great. Um, and then the last winner, <laughs> maybe lose a few, few viewers now that I've... Um, done the last winner. The last winner is um, for an FO in Instagram. I had one prize more than um, Fernanda had. Just the way it was. Just make sure everything's out. Yes. Sorry, I'm just going to put that on the floor so I can have more room. Um, was uh, for an FO on Instagram for a beautiful, I was so pleased that a really bright one <laughs> won a prize too. Again, Alexa chose the prizes. And um, this is a uh, for mother bird makes and that's Sarah and she wins a lovely um bag from oh gosh I'll not be able to remember what that's from is it handmade by Elphus I'll put it down below anyway she has some beautiful bags I have a bag of hers a couple of bags of hers as well in my mounting and she wins the West Green Lost Yarns um duo Right, so funny now. Okay, and this one's Mr. Darcy, and this one is Vintage Jeans, and they were um they were on our website that said that they went well together. So I thought get those and those would be a perfect prize. So Sarah, who is Mother Birds Makes, please get in touch with me and I will get those to you. And just again, email is best. Um, Ruth loves to knit at gmail .com. Well, did you win? Did anybody win? I hope you weren't disappointed. You could go over to Fernando. You might still have won something. Um, and not everybody can win, but I hope at the end of the day, you have a beautiful shawl to wear and um, you're a winner in my eyes and cannot thank you enough for the beautiful comments, for the beautiful shawls, for the interaction, for the fun that we had. And um, you never know, we might do it again sometime. <laughs> I'm gonna need to lie down after that though. Um, is that everything for today? I think that's everything for today at 52 minutes. Um, as I say, this weekend I'm going to a yarn show. So excited. Um, and um, I'm sure I'll come back with some woolly goodness from there. Um, um, the Southwest Knit Fest is on next month, but I'm still in two minds whether to go to it. I have a ticket, but um, it's not even, not even the restrictions I'm worried about. It's just it's all the people. I'm just not used to all the people and um, I'm not sure, um, yeah, I'm not sure I could cope at the minute just yet, but we'll see. As I get nearer to it, I might get more excited and want to want to go. You just never know. So I think that is it. That is it for all the yarny goodness. And if you've been a, f a watcher of my podcast before, you know, you know that I'm Christian and I like to end my podcast with a wee thought from God's word. And this uh, it's been quite a full on uh, couple of thoughts for the last few podcasts, but hopefully this is a little, <laughs> just a little reminder, a little um, refresher and a bit of encouragement um, for those who want to wait around. If that's not you, if that's not your thing, I totally understand. Don't don't worry. Um, as I always say, just thank you so much for being with me. I hope you were a winner and um, please come back next time and we'll have a bit of chat and a bit of fun again and you look after yourself in whatever you're doing over the next few weeks. God bless. Bye. If you are staying with me, um, I just want to talk for a wee few minutes about change. Do you like change? Now, when I was a teenager, 20s, even 30s, I loved change. I loved doing so. I loved adventure. I traveled all over the world, mostly on a shoestring, just a backpack. Um, as some of you know, I, I worked in Bangladesh for quite a few years and um, I just loved getting to know new people. I loved um, moving around. I loved the challenge of it all, planning it all, everything. Oh, now I worry about getting a car parking space in <laughs> Tesco's. 
oh dear me i don't know where the and not even just through the last couple of years just through you know maybe the last five or six years um i worry about things i never used to worry about i get anxious about things i never used to get anxious i'm not typically an anxious person and i can let a lot of things go over my head and but um i have noticed recently that i'm a bit more concerned than maybe i used to be some of that might be age some of it might be you know experiences but do you like change now gosh the last two years change is all we've been used to isn't it for either whether you've been home shelter and home or out working on the front lines or maybe in the last week if you're in the uk at least the furlough scheme stopped and you maybe have to go back to work maybe you're getting used to working at home half time working in the office half time maybe uh, you have a different way of seeing your family oh it's just been change 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 and i have a great maybe and timely reminder today that i know someone and something that never changes now some of you all know exactly where i'm going here but some of you might just need a wee reminder or a wee a wee refresher and that someone of course is our lord jesus christ and in hebrews chapter 13 verse 10 tells us that jesus christ is the same yesterday today and forever he is our anchor in this madness called life that last bit was just me <laughs> Um, and then, of course, the something is the word of God, the Bible. And in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 8, it says, The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our God stands forever. So what does that mean for us today in this frightening, confusing, chaotic world we live in? Well, that means the promises he gave us are the same yesterday, today and forever. And he is the same God he was in those Bible days and he is now. And, you know, I mentioned those green socks and that the label had Joshua 1, Joshua chapter 1, verse 9 on it. And I had planned this already and then looked at the socks. Leave that with you. And it says in Joshua 1, 9, it says, This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. No, he doesn't say, well, if you want to, a wee wishy-washy. He commands you to be strong and courageous, not in a you will be, but in a, look, I've got it. It's all good. I've got it. And um, you have to believe it. You have to trust it. And you have to have faith. Mm, that's maybe the hard bit. But, you know, over 365 times in the Bible, we are reminded that he's with us and that we're never alone. Now, if I was teaching kids in Sunday school, I'd say, what's the significance of that? And they'd all shout one for every day. Well, it's over 365 um, times. And I challenge you to find some of those some of those promises. But you might be saying, Ruth, it's too hard and I just don't feel his presence. And I get that. I absolutely 100% get that. But, you know, sometimes it's because we're just focusing on our current situation and not thinking about what plan, what and not focusing on what God's promise is for us. We can lose our trust in these promises very, very easily when the hard times come. Look, I am not in any way little and what you're going through at the minute i'm sure there's people watching me who are going through struggles and you but seek out the promises of god in the bible and spend time in his presence if you just face those problems head on by yourself on your own it's not going to go well but if we spend time with god spend time in his word seeking out those promises you know in psalm 46 it says in verse 10, it says, be still and know that I am God. What's your life like? Is it chaotic? You know, maybe you're at my stage, you're getting kids out to school, you're getting lunches made, you're getting out the door to um, different things. I do a lot of stuff that seems to be early in the morning. Um, then the kids are home, there's homework, so maybe you're getting out to work, getting the tea made, made, and then before you know it, you just want to lie on the sofa and go to sleep. Just take some time out with God. As I always say, God's word won't go in by osmosis. You can't put it under your pillow at night and hope for the best. If you want to know God's promises, you have to look for them. Take time away. Go into your quiet place. You know, whenever my children were small, there's only there's only 17 months between them. I used to go into the toilet. <laughs> That's how bad it got sometimes. And even then you could see the shadow under the door. And sometimes that's where I had to go, just to lock the door, take time out and take time away. Just away from the chaos and the noise. And don't be afraid to come before him in your brokenness, in your honesty. And just let him know. He knows already, but let him know what's going on in your life and about your feelings and your situation. 
Maybe you don't even feel you can trust his promises as you doubt his love for you. And please keep referring back to his word when you feel that way. It, and I have told you quite a few times in, recent, in other episodes on this podcast, if you ever doubt God's love, just go back to the good old faithful John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That is love. You know, the amazing promise of, of eternal life is open for everyone who knows and trusts him. It's a free gift he offers us and it's just there for the taking. He won't push it. He won't insist on it. He will, he'll wait for you to ask him. But it's very clear in God's word that that is the way. One way God said to get to heaven and it's through having him as your own and personal saviour. So if you're faced with change in your life and you feel totally overwhelmed, give it to God. You know, in 1 Peter 5 verse 7 in the Amplified Version now, um, I don't often go to that version, but this one, it really hit the nail on the head and it said, cast all your cares and in brackets, it says all your anxieties, all your worries and all your concerns once and for all on him. For he cares about you with deepest affection and watches over you very carefully. That just oh takes my breath away. Give your concerns once and for all. I don't know about you, but sometimes I give them and then I just take them right back. You know, casting all your cares in him might have to be a daily thing, even an hourly thing, but he can take them and he can carry them for you. And you know, my favourite hymn by far is What a Friend We Have in Jesus. And just quickly read a couple of the verses. There's four verses, but just what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear and what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. But this second verse, oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Maybe today you'll get five, ten minutes just to take yourself away. Take yourself away to a quiet place and just get down in prayer before the Lord. And if you're struggling, please get in touch. Please email me. I am happily chat to you online if I can help you with any other verses if I can help you understand how to get saved how to know Christ as your as your personal savior how to have that amazing um hope of heaven one day just get in touch please just get in touch or speak to your minister or whatever a Christian friend whatever and um if you don't remember anything else today just remember that God is with you wherever you go you're he says be strong and courageous do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you for wherever you go. Listen, God bless you all. Um, I've loved having you with me today. Um, I hope that you've you, you've enjoyed the nitty chat. It's been a whirlwind as always. Um, I hope that uh, you've had um, a good few weeks since I last podcast and I hope you have a good few weeks. I'm not sure what the podcasting date will be again because as I say, um, when I'm going home to Ireland at the end of the month, but you never know. I'll try and take you to Ireland with me. You can see the beautiful place that I originally come from um, uh, as I go and give my mum and dad a hug. And um, I just say for now, just look after yourselves. Just remember God's promises. Put your cares into his hands, into his arms. And um, as you go about your day, just remember he knows and he cares. All right, then you look after yourself and keep on knitting. All right. God bless. Bye.